Hi everyone to our new webinar about the statement loops. Um, some of you already know what statement loops are, some of you don't, some of you know them as the uh, story mode in our older version of the cockpit. And today I'm going to show you how these uh, statement loops work in our next software and how you can implement them and for what you can use them. Um, if you have any questions, uh, as usual, in the Zoom software, you find the F&A section. You can just ask your questions there and I'm going to answer them uh, via voice. And if you have any uh, further questions or questions you don't want to be uh, public, uh, you can contact me and our team in the, uh, we are my email address or the information you see. Okay, what are we going to do today? Uh, first, I want to give you uh, some I um, want to give you some information on when you can use the statement loops, what are they good for, because uh, I don't think everybody knows all the uh, all the ways you can use this concept in our system. Um, we uh, also uh, need some basic terminology uh, to use these statement loops, um, so uh, we will go over that. Um, I will tell you what your uh, project needs so you can use the statement loops, how to set up the statement loop in the uh, in the platform. I will I have prepared a uh, an example project to show you how it's done. And uh, we, we will have a few words about uh, how to write for statement loops and how to uh, get good texts out of them. Okay, let's start. When can you use statement loops? Statement loops um, as we, are, as we have identified, um, have in principle three, um, three areas where we can use them. The first area where we found them useful and the first area we used them in is sports reporting. So uh, imagine a, a soccer match. It has some events in it that are uh, predictable but happen at random times. So for, for example, uh, goals, penalties, fouls, uh, cards or ex uh, player exchanges. Um, these are all uh, events that, are, that happen in every game, but you never know the, the order of these events. So we want to have a possibility to, um, to adapt the text to this, uh, to this random order. Um, another way or another uh, area where we uh, found them useful are for uh, like product sets uh, in commercial texts. Imagine you have a gift set, it's uh, perfect for uh, for uh, the, the oncoming holidays, for example, if you have a gift set of maybe uh, a perfume, a shampoo, and a body lotion, um, if you give us the uh, the product data for each single uh, for each single product in that set, um, you can use these statement loops to uh, to text for each of those pr uh, of of those products, and you can and you don't have to prepare for each combination of uh, that you can have in sets. But if you prepare for each single, uh, if you prepare a segment for each single of those or, or for each one of those uh, products, uh, you can text for each combination that you have in your set. And in general, uh, anything that is in list form can be texted for with the statement loops. So for example, you could do um, like a business report where you talk about every single uh, department of your company. You could do weather reports where you uh, have a series of um, of timed events, again, uh, as in the soccer, um, and a few more stuff. Uh, as said, the one condition is that it is in list form. Um, here I have an example of the sports reporting kind. Um, this is a text that was written uh, in a uh, very, very small story um, uh, statement loop training. So for example, we have the, uh, the headline first, of course. Um, this is a usual statement as you are used to them in our trainings and the rest of them uh, have actually only been written once even if they uh, repeat, them, uh, uh, repeat themselves sometime. Uh, so uh, what we have as an input is uh, a data about what happened in the 15th minute, in the 22nd minute, in the uh, 43rd and so on. And um, the information, uh, what happened is put into the sentence and uh, in, in a statement. And this statement can be uh, 
repeat it as often as necessary. So for example, we have a, uh, the first goal. Um, we have a card. Um, we have another card, uh, which would be the same statement, but uh, a separate variance for the same statement. Um, we have an exchange and we have another card. So uh, imagine uh, other, other soccer games, uh, the, the order of these events would be completely different and we would have to, uh, have to anticipate the order every time and that's pretty much impossible for that in many events. So uh, we wanted to have it uh, depending on a list that you give us with the events. Um, as for the sets, as I told you before, um, you can uh, see how I did it here. I also wrote an, uh, a headline and I have a product, a product set uh, texted so uh, or, or uh, texted for and I have sub uh, sub headlines for uh, the, so the shower gel, the the, uh, the, the the body lotion and the fragrance and each product has its own set uh, its own sentences statements and but um, the the headline, for example, I only uh, created once and reused three times. So you can get, uh, so even here you can uh, reuse statements that are shared between the uh, between the separate products, which uh, can save a lot of time when you can reuse a lot of uh, a lot of sentences. Um, anything listy? I have a uh, an example of uh, the. Uh, of the business report right here. Um, sales department reports reduced costs. Campaign costs are the main driver of the reduction, whereas labor costs took a slight rise. Uh, this can be based in information uh, about the condition of the uh, department. Um, the next department, a drastic rise of cost may be worth a look in facility management. All KPIs rose in this department. Good news from IT, costs are down all over the board here. Um, as you see, uh, I have prepared a few sentences that are uh, that are well fit for the situation of a department. So, uh, like um, if they uh, if they break even, if they make a profit, if they make a loss, uh, you have to prepare uh, one statement for each of those cases, and then can just reuse them for all the departments in your company. Okay. Uh, let's come to the word the word. What basic stuff do we need to know for uh, for statement loops? Um, first, we have to know what an object is. An object is a piece of data which consists of several smaller pieces of data. So, for example, this object, the gray box here, consists of a name, which is uh, the body lotion in this case. It has a category, it, uh, it is lotion, it has a benefit, uh, it's, it cares for the skin and it's moisturizing. Um, this object describes one product, okay? Um, and the information from this object can be placed in a statement, like uh, name is a category would be a generic statement that you can apply to this object. Um, and the text generation, as you know it traditionally in our system, works like this: you have a statement filled with containers, you have an, uh, you have a data, uh, um, you have data about the pro uh, the product, and um, right now you can see name, name, is a category, category. They get combined, and the output will be this: eggs body lotion is a lotion. Now this is no Shakespeare, I know, but uh, I think it's it gets the point across. Um, you fill these voids with the data you give it. Um, now we can not only have one of these objects, but we can have lists of the of the objects. So uh, in this case, we have three objects. Uh, the first one is a shower gel. Um, second one is the body lotion. Third one is the fragrance. And one important thing in object lists is uh, they have to share the uh, the field names. Uh, which means uh, they have to share the um, there is uh, some names for for this for this side of the data field. Um, some know it as the headlines of uh, Excel columns, uh, the keys in these objects, the the names of the data fields. Um, doesn't matter how we call them. Uh, I will call them the field names. Um, they have to share them between the objects. So uh, the first object needs to have a name. 
the second needs to have the name, the third needs to have the name with the respective values in them, uh, and all the other data fields need also to be uh, in there in all of the objects, category, 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 benefit, benefit, benefit. Yeah? Um, this benefit here uh, is empty. Uh, that's okay, we can react to that, um, but uh, if we would have a benefit, it may not, uh, it, it may not be called helps with or something. The, the structure of these objects must be identical, only the values can differ. Um, then we need to talk about what a loop actually is. Um, as you may or may not know, in programming there's something called loop, a, a loop which uh, uses the same piece of uh, configuration or code several times and uh, for each uh, run through um, there can be some uh, some variables that change and for each run through there can be some variables that keep the same and uh, each of these steps in the loops has a, a separate individual output they don't need to differ uh, but they can differ um, in our uh, I think uh, this is a good uh, um, visualization of a loop. Um, our machine looks at each statement in the in the training from the uh, from top to bottom, uh, like the, the first, the second, and third, and so on. And with the statement loop, we now uh, can reuse statements. So it uh, it comes to the statement loop, looks at the first, uh, looks at one statement the first time, uh, and produces an output with it. It goes back, looks at the statement the second time produces output with it and uh, does it a third time, for example. Um, with a more um, visual example, it's, uh, it's going to look like this. Uh, for the first object, which is um, the shower gel, uh, we can produce AX shower gel is a shower gel as an output. For the second uh, view of the same statement with a different object, we get a different output. AX body lotion is a lotion. And for the third view of the same statement, you see it's always the same, only the input data changes, um, we get AX fragrance is a perfume. That's pretty much what the story mode does. Um, and uh, it cannot only apply to one sentences, but it's uh, in, in uh, if you know the platform, uh, it's always a whole story uh, that's getting looked at. So you have uh, the full power of all the combination of sentences that you would have in a single story you can use repeatedly. Um, what do you need to use this, uh, the statement loops? Uh, you need lists, everything uh, as, as, I, as I showed you uh, to look at the, uh, the statements or use the statements repeatedly, you uh, have to change the input data for them and that's, that is done in, uh, in list form uh, in the data. I can show it to you. Um, this is the model I showed you uh, earlier, like we have the shower gel, the lotion and the fragrance again. Um, and when you upload data, uh, they have to look pretty much like this. Um, you can have general, um, you can have general information like the name of the beauty set. Uh, this one uh, is like a normal data field in your uh, in your data set as you as you are used to them. And uh, then we have the list. It's depicted or it started with this square brackets, and it has each object uh, in it. Like uh, this is the shower gel name category benefit. It's like it's written like this and JSON. And the next object is just separated by a comma, and then uh, with curly brackets again, uh, the the same fields with the new values and again. So these three objects are represented like this in JSON and this is the structure you need to create a story, uh, a, a statement loop in our platform. Every, uh, um, everything you want to use in the statement loop has to be in one of these objects. Um, the statement loop can be surrounded by uh, by normal statements, so it's not exclusive in a configuration. And everything you want to use uh, outside of the statement loop has to be anywhere in the data set. It can also be in here, that's no problem. Um, but anything you want to use in the statement loop has to be in the list. That's uh, the single condition we have uh, for the data to use them. Um, 
And when you have uh, these data, you can create the statements uh, which are loopable. Um, as these sentences can be used uh, uh, multiple times, it's very important to write them very variantly, which means uh, make a lot of branches in them, uh, write a lot of synonyms in them, vary, uh, vary them greatly, like uh, not only change a word, but uh, try to uh, to change the grammar or even the um, uh, the bigger scope of the of the uh, variance between each other, so that when you have uh, three or four uh, incidences of the same sentences ne uh, next to each other, so that they are uh, variant to each other. When you keep that in mind and um, have a lot of objects, you can get um, a quite large or quite long texts uh, with uh, relatively little number of statements. Um, how is it done? Uh, I have a small manual written in here. Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I won't go to, uh, through that with you here right now because I'll show you uh, how to do it in the, uh, in the in a training directly. I prepared a uh, training, it's completely empty. Uh, it has only a collection in it with one data set. As you see, it's uh, the beauty set. It's the same data set as I showed you before. And I want to write a training with you uh, in here, uh, that text for these three uh, products in the set. So what do we have to do? Um, we can start by analyze the data sets. We have content and name. Um, which is what we find here. We have the name and we have the list contents, uh, which are the separate products. And when we have that, we can create the data notes for them, list contents. Contents is a list, that's correct. Um, and name can also create the notes. Uh, we have the uh, the notes for the two um, for the two data fields, and we can look at them in the transform right now. Uh, they look as we are used to it, so no difference there. Uh, the only thing is this one is a list. You see, it's uh, it's starting with this uh, per, with the square brackets and has the three objects in them. That's important because we need to uh, we need to uh, access them later uh, for the statement loop. So um, let's start with a headline. Uh, as usual, I have to add the variable in here to make it usable. Name. Okay, let's uh, first do a usual sentence as we are used to it. That's the headline. Headline. Heading. I have prepared a few sentences. And let's swap gift set with the actual name. The new AX Beauty set by AX Body Care. So uh, that's uh, the stuff you all know. And now we want to have a second statement uh, which uh, is looping. Um, so we have to create the loop first to have all this statement. How, we can, how can we do that? Um, we go to the narrate because that's where we build the stories and we add the loop, um, I'll call it products. Um, and it works pretty much the same way as the, um, as stories do, uh, only that they are special stories. Uh, this is called products. Um, we need to go back to the, uh, to the input list, the, the products um, also have to get a variable so that we can access them. Let's call them the product list. When I go back to narrate and select uh, my loop story, I can select the product list as the input. Uh, this means make, uh, the, make each single object of this list accessible 
uh, f uh, in each loop. And so we can uh, create variables to access the data that is uh, or that uh, that is in uh, each object. I'll show you what I mean. Um, we have a special uh, transform area for the statement loops because it must be separate. Um, you can access it by narrate loops, click on the loop and then open transformer and you will have uh, a new clean uh, drawing board for the transform section. Uh, the only thing that's different to the usual one is this inputs, um, which gives you one object at a time when you uh, are running the the the, uh, the statement loops. We can look at them. Uh, the test object provides uh, one object at a time for testing. So let's just look at uh, what's coming in here. Now we can see we have one product. It's the first product, it's the shower gel. Um, this is the, uh, this, as, as, as you see, this is one object. And now we can access each of these data fields uh, to put them into our statement. Uh, but first one word, what the uh, inputs provides. You see the item, this is the object, obviously. This delivers us the, the data objects. And we also have index. Um, index is a number which counts from zero to the number of the list length uh, so that you can know uh, in each statement loop where in the loop you are. So let's say you have 10 elements in that list. This uh, index uh, counts from zero to nine and uh, you always know where you are in the list and can do calculations with that. Um, okay, I prepared a few sentences to put into uh, our statement loop. Um, for adding sentences or statements to the statement loop, we go back to write. As story, select the loop products. It's uh, designated with loop here. And then we can start all the, uh, st uh, start to add all the uh, st statements. So first I have prepared a subheadline which will be uh, printed out for each product. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy. The name, create a container here. So uh, what I want to see when I'm finished is that uh, I have three subheadlines. The first one the, uh, will be the shower gel, then the lotion, and then the fragrance. Uh, input by each product or created by each project, uh, product, sorry. Um, I have to extract the name for each object. I can do that here in the mapping as usual. Um, I want to access the name, so I have to access it. I create a new mapping, add a parameter so, I th so that I can connect them and then hashtag param1 and with a full stop, I can access the uh, data fields that are in the object. When I write hashtag param1 full stop name, you see I have access to the name of my product. And I can use that as we know it with a variable. Go back to write. I am in the story loop products. I have available product name versus the name of the whole set. It's the product name. This loop, of course, has to be placed in the main story. Uh, this can only be done under narrate again. Click on story. And then I have the loop, uh, the whole loop as a statement here. And I then I add it. And now I can see the loop in my text. Okay, just took a bit of time. Okay, now you see it, the AX shower gel, the AX body lotion, the AX fragrance. You see, all of uh, I created one statement as a subheading and all of the products get written down here. Um, let's format that a bit more nicely. Okay, it's a subheading now. Let's see if this works a bit quicker now. 
do it here. Um, okay. I created two statements and have an output of four. Uh, that's uh, how quickly this, um, how quickly this, uh, the system, or, or th this is how quickly you can uh, increase the, the output length uh, with this story mode, depending on the input list. Um, I can, of course, not only use the same, uh, the same statements for all of the products, which I did with the subheadline, but I can, of course, create individual statements that only get activated uh, for each product, which uh, is done by the triggers as we are used to them in the, uh, also in the, in the uh, yeah, more linear, more linear platform. So first I want to create a sentence for my, um, for my shower gel. Let's name it like this. Shower gel without the space. Let's create another one with the lotion. And for the lotion, I will create two branches to see some of the uh, variation techniques in here. I have two different statements for the lotion. And the third one will be the perfume, which also gets two branches. Okay. Um, what I have to do now is I have to write triggers for each of these uh, sentences. Uh, inside the uh, transform area for the loop. So I go back to narrate loops and products and open transformer. Um, the way to access this is a bit complicated. Um, we are working on uh, making it a bit more pretty, but uh, it works for now like this. Um, now I have to write a condition. Uh, I have to add a parameter and connect it to the object. Uh, first, I have to get uh, what kind of um, what kind of category category uh, we have right now. Like category, uh, the the shower gel would would be the first, would be one of them. Um, again, I can access it like this: param one category uh, equals shower gel. For this one, it's green and add a variable as for the trigger. That's also nothing new is sure chill. And I have to repeat that for the other three. I have one for perfume. is perfume. I have one for is lotion. I have to look up how it's called exactly. Uh, perfume, not just lotion, okay. I have to check for lotion. Okay, now I have the, the three triggers. I can set them in here. Like shower gel is not always active only when it's shower gel. The lotion is only active if it's lotion and the perfume is only active if it's perfume. Okay, and like this, we can now create a text. Come on, like this. Okay, it takes it takes a bit of time to uh, to settle. Uh, so the X shower gel. We have the sen uh, the statement for the shower gel. Treat yourself to a relaxing shower with a soft AX shower gel. Care for your skin with a moisturizing X body lotion is beneath the body lotion and 
AX fragrance, the perfect complement to our care products is beneath the AX fragrance. You see, I created uh, four sentences in this loop, by, but I also, uh, already have six output sentences. And when I uh, update the data, uh, the data set to create more, uh, or to, to have, or if I update the data set to have more products, I can just do that by adding some more of these here. So uh, now we have a set of six pieces. And you see, uh, without adding statements, I can add more content. Okay, the statement loop, uh, that's it. Um, this is how you create them. Uh, as I said, I, I will post this, um, this manual also uh, with the uh, presentation. If you have any questions right now, please use the uh, question and answer part of the Zoom software, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about the statement loops. Okay, doesn't seem like, uh, doesn't seem like there will be any questions. Then thank you for, uh, at, for watching and uh, we will, uh, I will put that online in a few days so we can rewatch it and maybe do it and try it yourself. Again, thank you and bye-bye.